Welcome everyone to this edition of Talking About Socialism from a Marxist point of view. My name is Soraya and I'm based in London, although I'm not in London at the moment, I'm in Leamington Spa. Um, I'll be chairing the meeting. This meeting is part of a fortnightly series of discussions on issues facing the working class and socialists. Tonight's discussion is after Corbynism, where next for the left, part two. It's continuing a discussion that we began four weeks ago. Uh, Nick Rack will introduce the discussion for about 10 minutes, and then Will McMahon will pose uh, him a few questions, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to this meeting, and particularly those who are attending their first talking about socialism discussion. Uh, we welcome disagreement. No one should uh, feel that they can't put their hand up and they can't say whatever um, they, they think about the discussion. I'm going to, because I want as many people to speak, to be able to get a chance to speak as possible, I'll limit the uh, contributions to three minutes and I'll be quite rigid, but if, if people, there aren't enough people who want to speak. Um, obviously, people can come back in again. Um, the meeting is being live streamed to Facebook uh, and being recorded, and it'll be posted online afterwards. So if anybody has any problems with work, with their name or anything, um, for any reasons like that, you might want to um, change that. Um, okay, on that basis, I will give Nick 10 minutes. Fire away, Nick. Thank you, comrade uh, Soraya, and uh, welcome, comrade. So uh, there's a huge discussion taking place amongst the left, amongst the socialist left, amongst trade unions, amongst workers. Um, how do we respond to the crisis that we're facing? What can we do politically? Uh, we only need to look at the cost of living crisis, the strikes, the question of the NHS the war in Ukraine, ongoing climate catastrophe, uh, and we're posed with fundamental problems. Uh, against that background, we've got a situation in the Labour Party where the left really has been routed. 200,000 or so Labour Party members have left the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn's just been prevented from standing as the candidate in Islington North, and, and these issues have prompted all sorts of answers. And this discussion, I hope, will begin or continue to begin to discuss how socialists should respond to all of these issues. So my, my starting point is from two ends. First of all, it's the conditions and circumstances that face working class people in the here and now. And at the other end is uh, what's our objective? What's our goal? Uh, the fundamental proposition that, that, that I believe that all socialists should agree with is that capitalism cannot solve any of the crises that I've described. On an international basis, the working class is under the cosh uh, 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 and it needs an international response. Uh, what we as socialists have got to do is, is discuss, well, what, what does that mean? Should our aim be limited to winning a little bit of a reform here or a little bit of a reform there? Or should we have our sight on the ultimate goal, which is the achievement of socialism itself? Should we aim for the um, abolition of, of capitalism, of the profit system, which in my opinion is the root of all the ills that we face? Or should we accept that that's an impossibility and that we, what we have to do is reconcile ourselves to a life for us and for our children and our grandchildren in which all we can achieve is meager reforms. I don't accept that proposition whatsoever. I believe that the working class has the capacity to fight, the capacity to organize and the capacity to pose itself for itself the question of what sort of society do we want? Do we want to live in a society in which a few 
and I mean a few, a tiny, tiny handful of the world's population, earn from the ownership of the means of production more than most of the world's population. The difference between the rich and the poor, the growing inequality has to be swept away. And so th th those are the fundamental questions facing us when we find ourselves in the situation in Britain at the moment where the left, a large part of us have been driven out of the Labour Party. I, I'm currently suspended, have been for almost three years now without um, even getting a, a letter from the Labour Party explaining what they're going to do. But we now have the situation where discussions are taking place about the need for a new party. Should Jeremy Corbyn stand as an independent in Islington North? Um, should we stand candidates against Starmer? And so on. And I'm sure these issues are going to to be discussed in, in, in this meeting. My approach is that every tactical consideration that we're um, approaching, uh, uh, and by that I include all of those questions, is how does it help or hinder? How, how does it assist in our achieving that ultimate goal? If we want to change society, in my opinion, what we need is to build mass socialist parties across the world. Now, that, that may sound like pie in the sky. We're a million miles away from doing that in Britain or for that matter, for anywhere else in the globe. But that is what we need if we're going to change things. And we have to have mass parties that set themselves that task, that say the aim of our party is to get rid of capitalism. Now, a lot of socialists say you'll never achieve that. That's just too far-fetched. You can't persuade people. Look at the media. Look at the press. They'll be on our backs all the time. We'll, we'll never be able to persuade um, the majority of people. I take completely the different point of view. I, I became a socialist when I was a, a, young, a young man or teenager, as I'm sure other people on, the, on this, uh, this meeting did. If, if we are capable of understanding the need to change society and see um, the solution within socialism, then every single member of the working class can also draw those conclusions. But in order to assist in that process, we have to be confident, we have to be bold, and we have to not hide our arguments under rock stones or, or in the dark. And the temptation all too frequently is that socialists try to find shortcuts. They try to find a quick fix. And so periodically we have the call for a new party. And then when you analyze, well, what's this new party going to stand on? You find that the majority of people, even a large section of Marxists are arguing that it should be on what I would argue is a reformist basis. What I mean by that, I'm not opposed to reforms. I think that any socialist fights in the here and now for reforms. But reformism means limiting your fight to reforms within the continuation of the capitalist system. I believe that we have to fight to get rid of the system so that we don't have to fight continually for reforms. But if we limit it ourselves to simply asking for those reforms, we never really pose the need for bold socialist policies and we don't persuade people of what is needed. So the argument then comes back, but if we're going to stand in elections, surely we've got to pitch our argument for where people are at the moment. Most people aren't revolutionaries. Most people aren't full-blooded communists. How on earth are we going to win elections? Well, again, we have to start from where we are. If we really believe that socialism is the answer, we can't sell people short. We have to take our arguments and persuade them. And that, may, that means um, starting from a, a very low basis. Organised socialists are few and far between. The left has been driven out of the Labour Party, those socialists that stay in. 
feel that they have to keep their heads down for fear of being expelled and so on. So how do we do it? Well, we just have to take the first step and then we have to take the second step and we have to find allies and we have to work with others who may agree with us and we have to push our arguments out there. I, I believe that the electoral um, uh, field is an extremely important field for socialists. If we can't win a single MP as a full-blooded socialist, then we're a long way from changing society. So that's a big task that we've got before us. But rather than chasing the gold at the end of the rainbow by standing candidates on a pick and, wit, pick and mix basis or on a reformist basis or on a less than a socialist program basis, I think basically we're putting our energies, our time and our effort into a political project that cannot improve the lives of working class people. Thank you. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, okay, so apart from Janet's lovely cat, who has his or her paw up, has anybody else want to put their paw up? Well, I've, I've got a few thoughts, actually, Soraya. Oh, yes, Will. You, yes, go on. I was going to just chuck in just to get yeah, us going, yeah. and then I'll shut up, all right? Having, uh, having read... Uh, Nick's art article a couple of times. I just had a couple of questions for him, really. I mean, uh, from what I'm reading, Nick, you're not against actually the formation of a workers' party with socialist politics. You're just against the trade union bureaucracy being involved. Have I, have I read you right? Yeah, well, let's, let's take those two things. I, I believe that we need a socialist party and that socialists should be in a socialist party. Um, the, the the call the call that's coming at the moment from sections of the left is for a new workers party and for the trade unions to form it my own opinion is that this is simply reinventing the same old wheel this is what we had when the labor party itself was formed in 1900 and the problem that we've had is that the trade unions whether of the right or of the left actually have always um, ended up backing the leadership, the right-wing leadership. Mm. The trade union bureaucracies, for the most part, are not filled with full-blooded socialists. If we give the power and the veto in a new party to the trade union bureaucracies, the programme that we end up with will not be a socialist one. But, but they're, not, they're not necessarily the same thing, are they? You can have a workers' party, you could have a new formation, with socialist politics that wouldn't necessarily have to include the left bureaucracy you could be looking at the most radical trade unionists the most advanced sections of the working class through their branches and through industrial struggles so it's not that one doesn't imply the other well it it, it doesn't imply the other the question is what what it is what, what's being called for okay if people are calling for unions to disaffiliate in order to build a new party that's essentially calling on the um, disaffiliation of Unite, for example, or the FBU. First of all, it's not going to happen in the short term. Mm -hmm. And secondly, is the leadership of Unite going to commit itself at the moment to a socialist program? Um, I, I doubt it. There are good socialists in the leadership of Unite. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But what we have to have is a program for a party that's dedicated to socialism and if people want to join it on that basis then great and that includes obviously rank and file militant trade unionists and mm. sections or members of national executives and if, if you got into that situation yeah you would then sections of national executives you would then be starting to work politically work alongside part of the bureaucracy so it's not a, it's not the point i'm making it's not an either or really because well, you would, if it was successful, you would engage. Socialists always engage and always should engage with everybody and have the debate. But what wouldn't happen is that the bureaucracies who have, um, unless they're, you know, uh, genuine socialists, the bureaucracies have their own trade union interests. Uh, the example I give in my article is the 
um, TUC Congress resolution moved by the GMB, led by a right wing um, leadership, moving a resolution for more arms expenditure. So they're calling on the British state to spend more money on arms. Now that motion passed with the support of the Unite Union, that's my union, which is seen as a left-wing union. You could not have a position in a socialist party, in my opinion, where either of those two positions, left bureaucracy or right bureaucracy, determining the program of a socialist party to say, we're going to um, vote for uh, more uh, state expenditure on arms. It, 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 it would be the end of the Socialist Party that you've just created. Okay, and that's so why you've got to keep the bureaucracy out and have democratic control of the membership, um, just as you have to transform the unions themselves. See, I think, and this is the final point I'll make, Soraya, I think that we're slightly haunted by... I mean, the SLP and the, uh, the the use of the Cheshire Miners vote by Arthur Scargill. I think it was the Lancashire. Was, yeah, was Cheshire and Lancashire. And also, we're slightly haunted by the Socialist Alliance and Tusk and, and all those examples whereby there were controlling interests. So I don't, I'm not sure that you get away from controlling interests if you, if you, sidestep the bureaucracy by forming a smaller, as you, as you suggest, a, a, a kind of a 1920s regroupment, because then we're back in the room with comrades who we've been in the room with before, yeah, the Socialist Party and the SWP, who haven't exactly led the way on being open and broadly embracing a large number of people into a movement. So in, a, in effect, where you might be ending up, and I'll finish on this, is that you might be ending up saying, well, actually, we just need to regroup a relatively small num number of Marxists in a Marxist association, rather than anything that might look like a party. Well, uh, if, I, if I can just answer that briefly, and then uh, be interested to hear what other people ha have to say. I I'm not at all saying that at this moment we should launch a party. I think that would be mad. We we're nowhere near launching a party. Uh, but what we need to do is get together a group of people who want to discuss that seriously. And of course, I don't have all the answers. Uh, you know, it, it, it's part of a discussion that we have to have. So what we need is people who think broadly like us, who, who believe that we need an organized force for Marxism, communism, genuine socialism, whatever you might um, want to call it, and we reach out to others. I doubt very much whether the point that I put in my article about the revolutionary socialist groups getting together and working to form that core will come to fruition in the short term. It's what they should do, but I doubt that they'll do it because of all sorts of reasons. But what we do need to, if nobody else is going to do it, we have to do it ourselves. So we want to find whether it's 20, 40, 60, 200, people who come together and start putting out um, serious propaganda, serious arguments, serious li literature in the, in the various disputes. And particularly, I didn't say this in my opening remarks, but I meant to make, mention it. We have to try to find a route to the new generation, the younger generation, particularly young workers, who aren't essentially tainted or tarnished by all the defeats and demoralizations of the past. Okay. Thank you. So anybody want to jump in there or ask any questions? Ian, and then I can see Gerald's got his hands up. Okay, Ian, fire away. Good evening, comrades. Um, apologies, this is going to be a an incoherent ramble. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just thinking aloud, and and uh, and there's a number of things that we're faced with. We all know that on the one hand that we're in the deepest shit imaginable in terms of fragmentation and all the rest of it. But on the other hand, hang on a minute. Um, we're not having to contend with big Stalinist parties sabotaging things every step of the way. Yeah, they're still there. Um, 
for the most part, most of the most dogmatic sects have have kind of dissipated. There isn't the same kind of divisions that there were. Uh, what we have in a, on one level is a crisis of numbers, but then on the other hand, half a million people joined the Labour Party because of Jeremy Corbyn. Not just because of Jeremy Corbyn, but because they wanted something different. Um, over the years, like probably most of the people here, I, I've been in and out of the Labour Party at different times, um, but with no great illusions about what the Labour Party has ever done or will ever do. And, and, and I have no qualms whatsoever about saying any attempt to recreate the Labour Party 2.0 with a similar kind of program, the rest of it is a hiding to nothing. How long has Arthur Scargill's Socialist Labour Party been knocking about with no good effect whatsoever? Um, and you can see the same kinds of, and, and even when it's had a, a massive appeal, uh, similar kinds of organisations, whatever happened to Podemos, whatever happened to Syriza, I mean, there's a real difficulty, isn't there, with, with standing candidates for election. Either we stand on a very principled basis, in which case we might as well just flush the money down the bog. Uh, there's no point actually putting the putting the deposit up. Or um, we use the elections, but we put out the literature anyway and say where we stand. Um, and that's going to become more and more important. I mean, you know, why why waste the money on the deposit? You might as well just leaflet people and then organise separately. That's one possibility. The other thing is, uh, there are there are parties out there um, which have an open kind of program and are amenable to discussion, which are not Stalinist and which are explicitly Marxist. The problem is they're often quite difficult to join, <laughs> and. Um, so it's a very strange kind of position. I'm more than happy to join uh, a, a Marxist party tomorrow, uh, and one which is relatively open. I agree with it entirely that there needs to be some way of reaching out to it. Uh, okay, in fact, I'm just going to, thanks, if you can just bring that sentence to an end. Okay. Uh, another possibility, of course, is that there is a union which is also a party. The idea of having... Um, parties which are separate from unions is is a peculiar feature of of Britain. Uh, you could actually have a. Ian, yeah, that's a long sentence. Okay, oh, that's I'll a very cut long short. Gerald, know. Gerald, Gerald, next. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm doing that. Thanks. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, lovely to speak here. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm speaking from the point of view of Okissa, organised Corbyn-inspired socialist alliance, who are standing a candidate, or hope to stand a candidate against Keir Starmer in the next general election. Uh, this is kind of like, if you like, it's kind of like uh, guerrilla politics. Uh, we're attacking the head of the snake. Now that head might change and maybe we'll change our... Uh, attack so you know everything's open I, I listened very carefully to what people said uh, very interesting uh, our, our view is we should what we're doing is we're trying to unite people by going for Keir Starmer it's not just about ridding us of this horror it's about uniting the left we have reached out and we have other people reaching to, it, to us like Breakthrough, Tusk, uh, Chris Williamson. Uh, we are approaching the Workers' Party. Uh, we know that they have some interest. Uh, we believe they do. Uh, and others. So my view, and I think the view of others on the uh, steering committee, is that we unite people together. We bring people together. And that... We're pushing, we're going along the, the lines of a, of a 2017 uh, manifesto, uh, uh, Corbyn-inspired manifesto. But that can change because some things might not be right for now. And we can adjust that. Once we've got our, once we've got funding and we've, and we've got our, our uh, MP set up, 
uh, or, or candidate set up, I should say, we can change that, uh, and we can and and we we'll, we'll work with them. The important thing for me is that we unite the left, that we bring people together, breakthrough and the others. We bring all these people together under one umbrella. We are not a party. We're deliberately not a party so that we don't put people off. We just want to bring all these parties and organisations together to unite us. And that's what we need to do more than anything. More than anything we need as a, as a left to unite under a fairly broad uh, uh, manifesto and, and uh, curriculum, if you like, or, or uh, I can't think of the word I want to use, so I'm going to have to miss that bit. <laughs> but uh, we, we're, trying, we're trying to unite people. This is the most important thing. Like the, like the parties in Latin America come together and support each other to get people elected, that's what we need to do. And we, should, we need to take a, a leaf out of their book. And whether Jeremy is, is, is able to stand as an independent or not is his choice. We don't uh, believe we should pu push him either way, but we okay, will support thanks. anything he does. Okay, uh, and that's what that's where I stand. That's where Kissa stands at the moment. Okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, um, Ian. You posted quite a long comment on the chat. Do you want to um, do you want to say that, or do you want me to read it out? What should you prefer? Um, yeah, you could just uh, read it out, or I could. Um... Go on. You you said it's better if you. you I. It's your I'll your comment. I love to go in a minute too, but I'll um, see what others say say in response to it uh, on the on the recording if I can't catch it now. I just wanted to say it was a good point from Nick on the union bureaucracies propping up right wing leaders of the Labour Party, and that that does include Starmer now. Um, that if he if Unison hadn't voted the way it did, um, he wouldn't have got his general secretary or his anti democratic rule changes through. His first conference in 2021, um, even though they went against uh, their own lay executives, obviously with the right wing general secretary got in thanks to left um, fragmentation. Um, so I can't see myself the unions leaping from that position straight to Starmer so bad we have to leave the Labour Party and that perhaps a better demand from a fighting rank and file that will hopefully get a firmer grip on the leaderships than has happened yet in unison, where that's even been pushed back to time for real change and Paul Holm situation, um, would be for them to fight Starmer, including within the party where they still have that uh, purchase. Obviously, if things change and they lose that purchase or they try and it fails, uh, that can change. But in the meantime, I think that might be a more realistic first step um, uh, for them to to fight Starmer, including in the Labour Party. Um, and also just on a couple of quicker ones, um, on what Ian said um, about uh, Scargill Socialist Labour Party, I do think it's interesting that Chris Williamson's group was merged into it. Um, and I think the reasoning behind that was that it's uh, a good name and uh, if it's infused with a a uh, newer, more relevant uh, group of people, then perhaps something will come of it. So I suppose that's just a, a watch this space. Um, and on Akiza, I just said it's a great tactic, um, a bit of a mouthful of a name. I've also I got uh, the thing about it being Facebook based, I'm not so sure about, but certainly in terms of, again, trying to open up British politics, um, uh, this sort of guerrilla decapitation strategy uh, could work because it would throw, we, we could say to people, we're in favour of getting rid of the Tories, but we're not for Keir Starmer being Prime Minister at the same time. Um, for a Labour majority without Starmer as a, a, a member of it, <laughs> would certainly throw the cat among the pigeons in politics when the ruling class think they've got it all sewn up right now. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Gary and Anita, you're sharing a screen. Uh, can see one hand. Who, who, who is it? Whose hand is it? Okay. It's me, Gary. Um, Great, Gary. Uh, so I wanted to say that I'm, I think we're confusing two quite different things, two quite different questions, right? Organisational questions. The first one is what we as revolutionary socialists need to do and should be uh, prioritising uh, for our energies. And, and I do think that 
there's a, a slow burn, a long-term build that we need to do of a revolutionary socialist organization. And that starts by beginning to develop a network of what used to be called CADA, um, polit militant political activists who believe in revolutionary socialism and who can develop a relationships of trust with each other and begin to move slowly towards something that might be approaching the beginnings of a party. But we're, as others have said, we're a long way away from that. Now, that is a completely different question from how we intervene in the labor movement, how we intervene in any restructures, splits, mergers, and whatever of the labor movement and of the left. Now, I, as, as others have said, I think it's extremely unlikely that the unions will break from the Labour Party in the short term. Shame, really. I mean, it's what a number of us have been hoping for and, and sort of looking forward to for, 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 for decades, right, was the destruction of this um, poisonous entity called the Labour Party, which has held the British working class uh, down for 120 years. Um, but it ain't going to happen. If it did, we would have to work out how to intervene in it, but it ain't gonna happen. And actually, this is important. It ain't gonna happen because of, one of the reasons is because of the weakness of rank and fort file militant organization across the unions, right? Now, the bureaucracy, whether they're a left bureaucracy or a right bureaucracy, are not gonna push this. They're not even gonna seriously demand and force Starmer's hand around their policies, right? Unite is not gonna do that even though Unite we would see as being a relatively left bureaucracy. And we can see the problems with the resolution of the Abello bus drivers dispute in Camberwell recently, where the Unite bureaucracy completely sold out the strikers, right? Uh, I, I don't care about, uh, this is, the issue here is not about whether more could have been won. The issue is about how the strikers were manipulated and, 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 and deceived in how the dispute was resolved through a, a mock consultation there was no such thing right so there is a weakness across the disputes that we're seeing right now we're seeing disputes where the leadership whether they're right or left are undermining the disputes and there is a very low level of organization and militants across the rank and file and i think that's a major challenge for us it's also a major challenge for uh, us as revolutionary socialists in terms of where we should put our who, who we should we should be talking to right I am actually far less interested in talking to die-in-the-wool uh, labor right. reformists who, who, who believe in the Corbyn project still and don't understand what went wrong with the Corbyn project than I am in talking to militant workers on strike and, and, and doing what we can to strengthen their organization. Thanks very much. Um, I've got uh, Maureen. Oh, hang on. I can't see Maureen anymore. Maureen had her hand up. And has she gone? I think she disappeared. Her, her web went down, I think. she just... Ah, did she give a message? Okay. Um, well, anybody else got their hand up? Or put, want to put their hand up? Matthew. Yeah. My comrades. Um, no, I thought that what the previous comrade just said was was probably what I almost agree with. Um, I think the interesting thing really is uh, the, you know, as you say, the, the, it's an issue in terms of the development of the strike of a strike movement we've got at the moment under conditions in which, you know, there's been a very low level of class activity in the last near 30 years. So you're actually starting from, from, the, from, from you know, people just don't have that experience and they're, they're having to rebuild it, you know, and gain it. Um, and the interesting thing about going around and talking to people on picket lines is actually there's, it, it is a sort of difference between that and the layer of people who went into the Corbyn movement. And the, there is a crossover, but it's not by any means, um, you know, a the, 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 there's a political readover from one to the other uh, and so really i think it's a question then you know how do you address both of those lots of people there's two lots of uh, two lots of people really you need to address one one is obviously those people involved in the corner movement who are looking for alternative to what's being given at the moment 
The second is, is, is those people in, in, in involved in strike action and the conditions, as, as, as the comrade just said, in which senior bureaucracy is determined it, to hold the line and, and, and deliver for, for, uh, for, for the management and the state, um, particularly in the case of unison, but also you know, the unions as well. You know, in fact, of course, these things don't, you know, are, are thoroughly integrated and are thoroughly integrated. And the question is how, you know, how, how it starts to, 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 to break that, that, that down and build up you know, um, a cadre of pe people with, you know, uh, uh, as rank of file, rank of file militants. But then how, how is that, what are the political, the political um, conclusions that people draw from the current, from the current strike wave and what sort of political discussion there is? And how can you actually intervene into that? Um, the thing is that I think that the, 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 the problem you've got it, it also, of course, is that the ruling class itself has made it quite clear it's not offering any reforms whatsoever. I and mean, what it's actually in a position of doing is saying, well, we're, we're actually going to continue offering more austerity and war. And that's it. That, that, that's their program. Uh, you know, if you look at, say, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the Bank of England and, 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 and uh, Jerome Powell, the, the chairman of the US Fed, made it absolutely clear. So, well, we're, we're increasing interest rates because we need to crush wages. We need to make sure that wages don't go up. You know, that there's actually a material uh, reduction in, in working class living standards. That's what they're doing. Um, and, and uh, you know, that, that's why, you, you, that's exactly what Starmer's program is. That's why he's there. Because he's he's obviously you know, clearly an operative to, to, to with that with that job in mind, and, and therefore the question becomes: if you can just okay, round that up. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right, fine. Uh, uh, Maureen, you're back, and you had your hand up and and uh, had problems. Do you, do you want to come in now? Uh, unmute yourself, Maureen. You need to unmute. Hi, no, I didn't want to speak. I was just having problems getting in on my, on my phone. So I've went onto my laptop. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, G Gary Ironmonger. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I think there's, like the other Gary said, there's, there's, there's two questions here. One is a need to build a, a Marxist party and one that can get some kind of traction. I think with the number of Marxist organisations at the moment, that's not a, an easy one to do. Um, and uh, at the moment, I've not got many solutions to that one. Uh, but the other thing is, is uh, I, I remember Nick pointing out that uh, it was quite a lot of people could be called independent Marxists in the sense that they're independent of any party, but still on still hold on to some Marxist views. And I think from my perspective, then, you know, I'm open to being part of a Marxist party, but at the same time, see it as unlikely to happen. So what happens in the broader field? So as an ex-miner, I'm on a, one or two ex-miners sites, and I can see that, you know, we talk about older guys, but, you know, the guys who have uh, fought the class struggle big style, and uh, I've got more, over the years more and more disillusioned with the Labour Party. So, you know, amongst a section of guys who's um, shown themselves as class fighters, then there's a lot more disillusionment about the Labour Party than there used to be. Um, you know, a temporary uptick when Corbyn was leader that has been knocked back very severely, I'd say, amongst that group that has... You know, I, I communicate with on Facebook, and and if you look at it, you know it's right that people are angry with the Labour Party, or, you know, people who's been in class struggle because you know the Labour Party has been part of the problem. It's been a big part of the problem, and that's why um, whether I get very active or not politically, then I would, in the next election, support people who you know were standing against the Labour Party certainly. I'd like to see Jeremy Corbyn standing against the Labour Party, not because I've got any illusions in Jeremy Corbyn, but I think that a, a, a victory for Jeremy Corbyn in Islington would be, you know, a victory for the left, whatever he does, because it shows you that, you know, the Labour Party is not the, not the only game in town for, for the left. 
and the same as in the um, OCI, is it OCISA, the uh, standing against Starmer, then, you know, I'd be quite happy to help out with that, not because I think they'd stop Starmer from getting elected, um, but, you know, if they did, that'd be great. Um, and I know that these are, you know, these are not, um, you know, th this is not a programme to be standing on, and I won't be doing it saying, OK, we're going in standing on our programme. It's just a case of helping people who are trying to fight the establishment in some way. Um, and like I said, that's a separate question for the one about building a Marxist party, which is probably, which is actually the more important question. Mm. OK, um, I can see Gerald's got his hand up, but I'm going to bring in people who haven't spoken yet, Gerald. Um, Will, did you want to just say some quick, something quick? Just, just really quickly. I mean, I, I think it's really important to bring kind of independent Marxists together in an organisation, and that's something that we should be working towards, no question. Um, but I'm also wondering about the issue of people standing in elections as socialists, whether as independents or as part. I mean, Nick mentioned Tusk, pick and mix. Um, but do people think it's worth standing in elections or is it a completely forlorn thing to do? Is it worth trying to represent local communities in that way? Thanks. Um, Anita, is that your hand this time? Yeah, great. OK, fire away. Hi, great. Thanks very much. Um, so there are well, a couple of things I wanted to raise. Um, one of the things I'm kind of grappling with is, and kind of slightly frustrated and not really got any answers to this, is the conditions that we find ourselves in are actually quite um, unique, I think, in lots of ways, because um, these strike actions are happening. The votes are actually taking place with you know, substantial numbers of people voting. Everything's been set up against um, against the unions taking strikes, you know, we've got the laws. Um, I mean, it's incredible in the sense that you're not, they're not even allowed to take, uh, the votes are not allowed to be taking place over the, you know, digitally, electronically, or by email, you know, people have to physically fill in a form, lick a stamp, stick it in the post box. And despite all of that, they're getting phenomenal turnouts um, for strike action. And the recent sort of, you know, rejection of the nurses paid despite their unions, you know, trying to sell them out, even now trying to sell them out, um, is quite incredible, I think. So there is, you know, the potential for the working class saying they've had it up to their rivals, they're not buying any more of the reformist kind of crap from anybody at the moment, and yet... And yet we're not able to kind of grab that, you know, actually grab that in any way at all. Where is the left in that situation? Um, it's a huge potential there. And so that's kind of something I wanted to throw in there. Um, and it, actually one of the more frustrating things is when you go and pick at lines, you know, people are actually, um, uh, young people, uh, young women in particular in our post office in Peckham has become the brand secretary. And it's quite exciting to watch her develop. You know, it's obviously, you know, the picket line is the place where people learn a great deal of things. Actually, I find it quite frustrating there aren't paper sellers there too. It could be anybody, I don't care who it is. It'd be quite nice to have paper sellers there because people read the papers and, you know. So there is a kind of vacuum there that needs filling and I'm not sure why, where the left is and how we fill it. And I think that's where we have to come in. Uh, and the second thing I wanted to raise is um, the issue of democracy that somehow has eluded the left, um, as particularly the socialist left and the revolutionary Marxist left, which we still have to grapple with. Um, you know, the, the, the kind of the people, the people who are setting up the um, campaign to stand against um, Starmer. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure it's, it's parties that put people off uh, from joining them, being united. I think it's a lack of democracy that put people off and becoming united. Democracy, I think, is the key. And so in a sense, I mean, um, when Will says, you know, would we have union bureaucracy being part of the socialist kind of organization that we're trying to sort of set up? Well, in a sense, you know, if we put democracy at the forefront, we wouldn't get the union bureaucracy wanting to join, you know, we would have to, up front say they have to be accountable so those are the two things i wanted to raise thanks thank you that's 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 very concise um now i've got lots of people who've well i've got one two three four people who've already spoken um with their hands up 
but I'd like to see some of the people who haven't spoken before put their hands up. Um, Minnie, you've got your hand up. Hi. hi. Yeah, I think we, hi. Yeah, I think we need a platform for sure. There's no opposition to what's happening. Um, Unite Investigates, they found, they've been looking at profits and doing, since the COVID pandemic, Corporate profits, business profits have risen by 89%. I notice now on Twitter and on social media, the Tory party is being called the Tory crime syndicate because that's what it is. Um, there, there is so much. There was Wes Streeting the other morning on, was it Laura Coonsberg or some, saying, well, I'm not here to say what I do in place of the Tories. I'm not here to say I'm not in government and I'm not going to be in government anytime soon. Basically, no opposition, no ideas, no plan, nothing. And we definitely need a platform that's urgently required. And we have this thing, win something, have it taken away, the NHS. Um, win something, have it taken away, have another war. That's the situation we're in. So we need big messages to say we need to change the system completely or this is going to just keep happening. It's, it's crazy. Failure, or the amount of people shouting at the TVs, imagine all the energy, just imagine it all, all that power. Um, we've got an alternative candidate standing in, in the council elections here, and I will read you some of the messages on that leaflet. The left is split so small that these right-wing councillors, right-wing <coughs> people can get through. This guy says, your independent voice. Um, Labour councillors have allowed character, this city's character to nearly vanish. Born and bred residents are losing their community. Assimilation isn't working. Only me opposes the cultural transformation. Be the change, vote for me. Your voice, your community anti-immigration, anti, it, it, this, is, this is the worry now. There's a lot of candidates. We also have in Liverpool, we have something called Liberate Liverpool, which is being led by a businessman who has chains of hotels everywhere. I'm talking big money, big hotels. I think he's mortgaged to the hilt. Um, had trouble do, during lockdown, opened a homelessness shelter and helped people. But it's about a kind of kind of, a kind of business um, and it's not going to work and it's already been revealed that some of their candidates are actually homophobic, racist. Um, they stand around in town wearing suits and, and overcoats and it's, there's, there, are, there are alternative things popping up, but we need a platform to shout from and we need it, we need it as soon as possible. And we do need to get, you know, I'm studying Marx. Yeah, okay. We do, we definitely need production for need. We need to get hope. We need working class to understand, all of us, I'm working class, that we need to be in control of production and okay. of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Manny. Um, any other new hands I can encourage to go up? Okay. Then in that case, um, I think Matt. Matthew had his up first. I'll take Matthew and then Gerald. Right. Thanks, comrades. I'm going to get my camera so we can cooperate. Um, yeah, no, I think the other, the, 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 what, 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 all I'll the give you two minutes with... rather than three this time. So apologies. Okay, right. Sorry for interrupting. I agree. And I think the, the, the other thing is, I agree with Will um, that we do, or uh, in, in answer to Will's question, we, we do need to use the elections. We do need to stand in elections. Um, you know, there's no question um, because. I mean, the point being is that, that, that of course, what, what's happening now, of course, is that, that the public services are basically being destroyed. Um, you know, essentially, the, the, what you're being offered now is, you know, essentially, we'll, we'll, you know, put us in office and we'll just destroy what you've already got. Um, and and that, that, that's across all the parties, whether that's the Labour Party, the SNP or anybody else um, in these parts. Uh, so... You know, the other, the other thing, of course, is I think that there's a few other points in terms of, I think the other, the, 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 the other thing that comes out of the strikes, 
Um, and, uh, and I think also people should pay attention to what's happening in the rest of Europe as well, and particularly obviously France, where you've got you know, a whole series of general strikes, is that it does actually also underline if you the, the, the unions themselves are not not got a particularly strong base either. You know, I mean, there's a load of members of the unions, but they're actual activists. You know, generally are quite old. Um, you know, because the unions have not been active for the last 25 years. I mean, actually, if you look at the average age of people in unions, it's quite old, and the activists are even older. Um, so, you know, if they want to, if unions are going to continue, um, one, they have to deliver, and the problem is the union bureaucracy ain't delivering anything much. Um, uh, because the other thing that's going to happen now, if, if you know, once we start to see, you know, big sellouts, like, like, like that's what probably going to go through in the in the uh, in Royal Mail, is people just going to leave? People just going to leave? Yeah. Um, because it's not, it's no good. It's just no good. I mean, whether we agree with that or not, that's what's going to happen. Um, Thanks very much. Right. The other thing I, the well, other thing, I'd, I'd, I said I'd do two minutes. Okay. Right. So that other people can have a chance. Um, okay. So, uh, Ian. Well, well, the first thing is obviously that if Jeremy Corbyn stands, he'll, he'll romp home. Whether he stands or not, who knows? Um, even if he does, well, I'm old enough to remember when uh, Ken Livingstone romped home and what came of that. Um, the fact is he's tied hand and foot to the whole semi social democratic tradition, uh, which even Rosa Luxemburg regarded as a stinking corpse. It's about time we buried it. Um, my own feeling is that, that if, if we're not going to stand in elections and do that kind of thing, then at least let's do what we can do, do and do it well, which is a, a reasonable um, education and propaganda that we can put together. I'm not opposed to principle to, to standing for elections, but having had so, quite a bit of experience of that, um, it's going to mean hours and hours of the kind of legwork around litter picking or every other local issue before you can uh, have any kind of claim to even get on the county council. And even then you end up just administering the cuts anyway. So um, what I want to see first and foremost is a Marxist party. I don't, I don't see there's any point in trying to refound a, a Labour Party 2.0 with a bit of left wing stuff thrown in um, because we've seen how that's failed time and time and again. So who's going to call the Marxist Unity Conference? Um, I don't mind who does it. I'll go. And but who's going to who's going to call it? And I think that's what needs to happen. And it needs to be a Marxist Unity Conference, not uh, you know, let's put everything in a rag bag of the uh, motherhood and apple pie party conference uh, in the hope that somehow out of that will come something a bit left wingish. I'll leave it at that because that's probably even less than two minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, Gerald. Hi, thank you. Uh, I like that. Uh, just want to say, first of all, uh, in, in, in reply to some questions, uh, Okissa has a website, which is okissa.org.uk. Uh, it's fairly new. We're getting things up and running, as I said before. Uh, we're new. We've only been going for a couple of months. We've got just over 5,000 members. Uh, so we're doing all right. Uh, we, there's a lot of work to do, of course. Uh, Union-wise, personally, I don't believe we should uh, be uh, building something that is undemocratic through committees and other such things. We need something that is member led, one person, one vote, no block votes, no special treatment for anyone. One member, one vote, that's the end of it. Uh, that's what, what my colleagues in Okissa agree with. Uh, broad thinking, we need to have broad thinking and we need to have action. We're having action. Okissa is doing something. We're acting. We need people to come on board with us and we can build as we go with a broad thinking. Uh, if we go too narrow, we're not going to get people along with us. We need to get people in. We need to, to bring people in and we need to educate and support people. OK, so that's uh, more than anything what I want to say. But Okissa is democratic. It, it, it will have a situation where we're setting up a, 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 a website so that people can have a vote and everyone will have the same votes. I won't have any special votes. No one will have any special votes and there'll be no committees and such. We're getting rid of all that. We're just about 
a member-led organization which pulls everybody in together as much as we can and there you are that if we can achieve this if we can get people together then we're starting to build that 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 one organization that everybody wants and that's the way forward and, and hopefully something can come out of that but that's what we're looking for and, and now i'll leave it that for the moment thank you thank you i mean ju I, I just um I'm, i i want to ask a question um for people to, to consider is standing in elections an end in itself or is it a tactic to to get a a, a greater message across um people talk about action you, you just spoke about broad thinking I, I i don't know what do people think what does broad thinking mean it's, it's i think as as minnie said we need to be getting around a program um but what do people think and and people talk about member led organizations i know that's a re reaction against control by the bureaucracies of trade unions and parties um but doesn't there have to be more said than than that um okay i can see that um the gary anita house have got one hand up um so whoever it is pop 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 in for two minutes thank you sir it's me again gary um, on the question of standing in elections against the Labour Party, um, I think that um, we have to be entirely opportunistic about this in one sense and principled in another. So we don't have the forces, I don't believe, and looking at the numbers in this call, which is a good number for, for where we are, I don't think we have the forces to stand under our own politics straightforwardly and under our own name, if we had a name. Um, so we're going to be looking at where there might be a community, a constituency, where there's a community that is campaigning over something and wants to stand a candidate over an issue. And definitely I would be up for intervening in that kind of election. Uh, there might be somewhere else where there is a broad left body that's brought together a number of forces who wants to stand <laughs> against the Labour Party. I'd be up for intervening in there. But when I said it's a question of we should do it by principle, I think we have to model it really on the united front we should say well we'll stand because we share a demand with you and we'll campaign for that demand within the election campaign so for instance if corbyn does decide to stand against the labor party and of course in his mind it won't be against the labor party i would contribute and intervene in that election campaign on the basis that i want to sort the nhs out and on the basis that i want to campaign and fight the war Right. Those are two issues where I feel I could actually share something with the Corbyn not, uh, candidacy. But in the process, I'd be trying to criticize, dispel and educate other comrades in the campaign actually against Corbyn's reformist laborist politics. And I think so, so. So I think we have to keep our principles. We have to keep our politics. We don't throw away our own ideas and our own politics when we go into a broader election campaign on the basis that we want to work with other people far from it we take our politics in there thank you sir thanks gary um so <clears throat> any other anybody who hasn't i know i keep saying this but anybody who hasn't had spoken um their thoughts would be very welcome because what we want is not just a few people speaking lots of times, no disrespect to the comrades who have spoken because they've been very interesting contributions, but but for everybody or as many as possible to um, to say what they think about what's been said or what hasn't been said. Soraya, can I ask those that haven't spoken what they think of what they've heard so far, even if it's yeah. just a couple of sentences? Okay, yeah, I'll do, I'll do, I know I'll my do old, that. My old friend Mark French is on this call. He should say something. Yeah, Mr. French, what do you reckon? Um, it's been a very interesting... This is, this is the first political meeting I've been to since I stopped going to Labour Party meetings. Um, Welcome. <laughs> um, but, uh, Mark, I can really sort of give my, my feelings. I mean, I've, it's been... The last year or so, it's been incredibly frustrating watching the march of the right 
through the Labour Party and you think it can't get worse than this and, it, and then it does and it's just getting worse and worse and somebody who I know who used to be um, who I still know who used to be in the, in the militant tendency back in the day he said when there's a counter-revolution it never things that never get thrown all the way back to where it started and I think he was talking about maybe the French Revolution um, in particular but this seems like it has pushed things back to where we started and it, it's it's been a complete debacle and it's like where do we go from here because um it was it, it was a movement the Corbyn movement threw up a movement um with such promise but and it's crashed so badly um I think that my time to speak is limited my feelings are if Corbyn decides to stand in Islington North then go for it we should we should um we should we should you know, support him on principle um if this is going out on Facebook, I'm probably going to get expelled from the Labour Party now because I'm still a member. But um, really, on, on principle, I think he should fight if he's being squeezed out in the way he is. I think he has no choice. And I think to to lose a battle, I think this what this has shown us, this whole Corbyn thing, but for, for me, is to, is to lose a battle without a fight is the most, it's so demoralising. Mm -hmm. And at least um, if, if he does stand in Islington North, and even if he loses... Um, he would have put up a good fight. And I think that's worth it for that. Um, there are, I mean, people have mentioned how many people are out there who who, who are sort of floating Marxists. I think there are many. Um, and I think there are many people on the left who are Marxists without even consciously realising it. And I think that's, that's our constituency. And uh, it's how to reach them. Massive problem. I really don't know where to start. I think maybe starting in small groups and talking is, is probably a beginning, uh, but it's a very small beginning. Uh, but I think it has to be done. The, the bottom line is that we got to, I think you've got to raise the banner of uh, communism, basically, because anything less is, is lending support to a system that is doomed to failure. And that includes the politics of Corbyn, uh, and the left and the, and the and the left bureaucracy and i think you know it's something that we maybe pulled our punches about um during the height of the corbyn movement it didn't spell that position out clearly enough i think and we haven't you know i think we're suffering for it now anyway i could go on all night um and i'll i probably will now go and bore my wife uh with, with my thoughts about all this but uh yeah it's a very interesting discussion this and very, very stimulating Thank you. Suzanne, I can see your hand up. Um, well, Nick just asked, what do we, what do we think? Um, I think listening to this discussion just kind of proves to me that I, I, I can't see, I can't see success happening. I think there's, it'd be lovely to have, have, have a, 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 a Marxist party. It'd be lovely to to be working towards it, but I just see people pulling in all different directions and focusing on all different things. And you haven't even, and I, I wouldn't suggest in, in uh, bringing it in at this point. But even if you got a party set up and you establish whatever your program was going to be with it. Uh, it would be ripped apart with identity politics because the left is torn asunder with that. Um, and I, I, I can't see, I don't feel at this point in my life, I'm gonna put any energy. I mean, I'd put some energy perhaps into a candidate like Corbyn standing just, just to give labor uh, a, uh, a bloody, nose. bloody nose but I, I i i just can't see that i at this point in my life i'm going to spend any energy really I, I don't see it being successful in my lifetime so anyway sorry that's what i think don't, don't apologize thank you thank you for sharing your thoughts with us steve what do you reckon uh see, I, I think we've got a, a real anomaly here because so on the evening of the 2017 general election, I was up at the um, polling station 
And then it was a these young guys were coming towards us, and they said to us, um, "What have you got there? Uh, you know, this is a quite a poor housing estate." And there was, and they said, "I said, oh, we're we were Labour." They said, "Oh, you you were Jeremy Corbyn," and I said, "Yeah, yeah." And they took the leaflets off us, hundreds of leaflets, and they went and gave them to all their mates at the the youth centre. And when we turned the corner, there was, I mean, I can only describe it that we were witnessing something that you maybe see in South Africa or in certain states in America during the elections. Uh, there were literally two, three hundred young people queuing at the polling station to vote for Jeremy Corbyn. And I think it's been discussed on this meeting tonight. Now, you've only got to look around um, at the meeting, and I mean no disrespect, but I'm probably the youngest one on here, and I'm I've, I've just just over 50. Um, so I think our dilemma, we, we talk here about and what we do tactically. Um, so my history is I, I I went with the Social Appeal. I'm not in them, I haven't been in for 20 years, but that's the trajectory that I am in. So, but I've, if, if without putting words on that, if you know what I, what I mean, um, so, but I, I think our real dilemma is how do we get to the youth, mm. right? And and I think that is the real dilemma because we've got, we talk about union bureaucracies, we talk about um, a layer of, of, of activists, but unless we replace ourselves almost, we're not going to really go anywhere. You know, when I first joined, and, and, and there's a, I'm looking at a number of people on here that, uh, including Nick and, and Gary Iamungo, I know at the time, were was I believe on the YS National Committee, um, and Soraya and and others, and and I just think the issue is we had something to join, yeah, um, that attracted young people, yeah, and there isn't anything to join at the moment, and that maybe not is not the Labour Party, but there might not be another form. That might just be that we have to get involved in the struggles as and when they come up through our unions, through not identity politics, absolutely not, but through other single issue campaigns that we've all been involved in in the past. But I think the real issue that we face is how do we get to the young people that are angry, that want to resist, that want to fight for a future, um, because they were certainly there, and there's certainly a lot of of of, of anger um, mm -hmm. out there. I think the problem is a bit more multifaceted than whether or not Jeremy stands on what we we might or might not do about that. I think it's a bit more multifaceted than than it perhaps was around Gargill or something like that. Um, that's why, yeah. But it's a very good discussion. Um, and I'm sure if we was in the pub or the coffee shop, I might be a bit more forthcoming in some of my words, but you have chosen to put this live, so I'm happy to be a little bit more diplomatic here. But anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we've lost Barry. And, uh, yeah, I think he's he's gone. Uh, Janet, did you want to say anything? I don't know. I just feel very conflicted. Um, I think part of me agrees with Suzanne, and maybe that's my age. At my age, I can't see a future that I'm going to be part of, that I want to be part of. Um, but also, I think I did actually agree with a lot of what, is it Gary? Anita, Gary was saying? Yes, yeah. I think, I don't know if those are in, there are tensions between those two points of view. I think there probably are, but, you know, the whole thing is very complicated and I don't really have a fixed view. I mean, I think about the Corbyn thing is quite easy. If he stands, the left should support him um, because it's, it's, it's anti-Starmer because it will mobilise a lot of people who've lost a lot of hope. I don't think it will do anything after that. I mean, if he wins, good. If he doesn't, if there's been a campaign, well, that's good. I think his campaign will be very much around 
him as a constituency MP, which isn't what we're looking for, really, but that's how he's going to win, I think. Although he'll put forward, obviously, his, his ideas, his missions, whatever. I don't, in a way, I don't think it's that important. And in the Starmer thing, great, let's somebody stand against him and we'll all help. But I think it's it's not important. I'm sorry, Gerald, I don't think it matters that much. Um, so I don't know where I stand, which is why I haven't really said anything. But um, I guess from what Mick was saying at the beginning, although I think I do believe that theoretically, yeah, it seems to me it's it, it's kind of like, where do you, if you take your point of view, where do we go from here? Because it, it, it is quite rigid and, you know, how long is it going to take, really? So I, I don't know what I think. So, so I like listening. Because maybe I'll think something more positive in, in a week or a month or two months, whatever. Well, no, thank you. I mean, I think I think you're voicing um, probably what we're all thinking to one degree or another. And it's mm -hmm. it's um, it, 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 is it easy? No. And is there but is there a choice? Well, sorry, I'm adding my bit. Not not really, because what's the alternative? We've got we've got to. The, the, I suppose the point of these discussions is where are we and and how do we get to another place? But not nobody's saying that it's easy. Um, Neil. Uh, who hasn't spoken, you've got your hand up and um, fire away. Okay, um, I think the one thing, I mean, whether Corbyn stands or not is is a moot point. If he stands, I'd support him. Um, but that's more of a, a personal choice of his. It's not something that we need to really consider. Um, I think what, what Corbyn showed is that if you have a voice in politics as it stands, um, you can shift the narrative. And that was one of the big things that, that he actually achieved was to shift while he was in uh, while he was leader of the opposition. He could shift the narrative of politics to talk about things that hadn't been discussed for decades, really. Um, and so there is a there is a, a, a power that we can use in politics as it stands. To, to you know challenge and to change narratives and stuff. The problem we have is that we don't have a platform big enough to do it from. Um, because even if Corbyn, you know, if Corbyn was the leader of a party the size of the Greens or the Liberal Democrats, he wouldn't have had any um, media coverage. Just the fact that he was the official leader of the opposition um, that got him that, that voice. Um, and we're not likely to be in a position like that for a long time. So if, if we're gonna stand in elections, I think we do it from a, a sort of like a propaganda point of view. We do it from a, a way of engaging with with local communities. So it's like Gary said, if if there's a you know a local um, issue or something you can you can get behind, or I mean not not use, but um, if if you've got a standing in community, then why not stand as a Marxist? in the local elections and just have those discussions, have those arguments, get onto the hustings and put your politics forward. Um, we're not gonna be able to do that on a national level for quite a while, I wouldn't think, but you could do it individually if you're in a position to take that step. Um, a, as to anything else, the rest of it, I mean, because as Marxists, we don't really agree with politics as it's run, um, the whole parliamentary system and its its complicity with with the retention of capitalism, then a lot of what we have to do is is propagandistic and educational, and it's just finding the ways we can get those ideas to, into our communities, into our 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 you know peer groups and whatever else. I mean, I think I think that's what we've got to concentrate on, whether that's standing in a local election or doing it in some other way. I think that's up to individuals. Um, you know, as they see fit. Thanks very much. Okay, I'm going to, um, Will, uh, you asked a few questions, but I'm going to give you uh, a couple of minutes and then I'll call Nick. I'll be okay. very, I'll be very, very quick. Um, I think, I think the Starmer thing, uh, Gerald, I, I don't want to upset you, yeah, but I don't think you'll be chopping the head off the snake. I think you'll be chopping the arse off it. 
because they will get rid of Starmer and they'll replace him with somebody else, right? That's Come what back, that that's that's what they will do. Um, yes. because actually he's he's I think he's transitory, actually. Um, so I'm not sure. And also, if you leave it the opposition, your vote tends to go up, actually. It doesn't matter how bad you are. Um, if, if, uh, but with Corbyn, uh, personally, and I might be completely wrong, I wouldn't underestimate the impact of Corbyn starting, standing, running a big, really big campaign, wanting to get himself back into Labour, but mobilising people who we want to talk to. I think that's the important, because those people that's, that that's, I think it was Steve was, was talking about, they haven't gone away. They haven't gone away. They're still pissed off and they're probably even more angry because of the actual, the, the public onslaught against Corbyn, I think has radicalised people. It's not made them less radical. It's made them more radical. And our problem is working out a way of how to find them. And that's why I think as a starting point, we have to network ourselves as Marxists, but intervene in the ways that we think appropriate, not as a democratic centralist organisation, but discuss and intervene locally where we think we can reach people and bring people to the arguments around socialism. Thank you. Um, Nick. OK, um, thanks very much. First of all, I think it's been a, a great discussion, really, really interesting, wide ranging. Um, people have spoken, obviously, from their heart as well as from their head. And um, that's very interesting in itself. So I, I think uh, Janet's point, I think it was Janet says, where do we go from here and how long is it going to take? Well, I, I, I've used the expression before some time ago, but those of us who are Marxists and believe that there is a solution to the crisis facing humanity and we call it socialism, in a sense, we're... we're um, we're doomed or we're blessed because we're blessed with the ideas that could change the world, but we're doomed because uh, we've got a big uphill struggle. Um, there is no alternative. Just like for the working class as a whole, there is no alternative really, but to struggle. Uh, and the advantage that those of us who are Marxists have, I suppose, is that we've got some sort of idea about what the answers are and therefore it's our job our duty to try to pass on those arguments to other people um steve talked about passing on to new generation i i feel that immensely the um the task of passing on to a new generation some of the ideas and lessons that that, I, that i've learned limited as they as they may be um but one of the things um, that I have missed is regular political discussions with co-thinkers. And I think that that's the problem that, in a sense, a lot of us are atomized. We're spread all over the place. We've been either working away in the Labour Party or trade unions, not necessarily all the time with people that think like us. But this idea of a network of Marxists I think is very, very important. And we've got the embryo of it here. I think we should set up an independent Marxist network, whatever we call it, that's a sort of working title. I think we should set up an independent working network. We've got a, we've got a, um, a blog at the moment. We've got uh, the talking about socialism uh, discussions. We can invite other people. I think the discussions that we've had so far are open, they're encouraging. I hope people do do feel the the ability to speak. Uh, and we need to discuss more and more about what we can do and bring the different strands that people have pointed to. Uh, Will's just spoken about the the Corbynista movement, and it's it's clear to me that you know 200,000, 500,000 millions of enthusiastic people they will be disappointed demoralized dejected but they they haven't gone completely away um then you've got the people involved in the strikes the rcn members who defied their union bureaucracy to vote to reject the offer and so on there's a huge amount of work that could be done and that's perhaps daunting but if we discuss amongst ourselves and uh, and work out where we can work, how we can work, where to best put our efforts, always 
seeing what we can do to assist working class struggle, but most importantly, and perhaps more importantly, is how do we both do that, but raise the idea of the importance of, of, of transforming society so that we don't have to com continue to defend the NHS. All the reforms that we've grown up with, uh, I think Steve's got a point. I think uh, Joe, who's on the meeting, is possibly the youngest by far, probably by about 30 years. But um, uh, the, the, the reforms that we're used to, like the NHS particularly, you can see what is happening to that at the moment. It's being destroyed and its destruction will come probably under the next Labour government. Is that, that's one of the tasks that Labour is being fitted for office. And so there are all sorts of issues where we can explain that if we want to stop these attacks, if we want to stop reforms becoming counter-reforms, because that's, that's the, the era that we're living in, a, a counter-revolution against all the, the gains of the post-war period, it's actually, as, as um, I think it was Marx said, uh, it's communism, not, not the communism of Stalin and the Soviet Union, but genuine communism as with Marx and Engels. And I, I think Marx also right, we, we do or we have pulled our punches. We need to speak more uh, boldly and more confidently. We need to put our arguments down in print, put them on podcasts, put them out in um, discussions uh, like this and try to disseminate them. And there, have been, there are people who are facing the same struggle and the, fa the same difficulties in far worse circumstances than we are. We live in a, a relatively liberal democracy. Uh, we've got freedom of speech to a large degree. We can have discussions in the open like this. So we're not facing the repression, torture, murder, incarceration and so on that many of our comrades internationally are facing so we've got to do everything that we can to um, try not to succumb to demoralization or dejection to try to find um, a way of reaching other people uh, I, I think that we could each bring more people to further discussions we could um with enough time and and consideration get the money together to do a leaflet for example if we wanted to in, intervene in a particular dispute in one area or a, a national dispute or if there's a demonstration to put our our ideas in in some sort of print and, and start getting our open democratic marxism across um so i i think it would be premature to form a new Marxist party now, but a Marxist a Marxist network bringing people together and showing our openness and our ability to discuss in an open way and contain differences, have differences. I do agree with what Suzanne said um, on the the um, pernicious danger of identity politics. I think. Um, We've got to emphasize the issue of class rather than um, differences. Uh, but all of these things are um, subjects that we can come back to and we can discuss. Just going through some of the points right from the very beginning, I, I just want to reiterate this question of if we have if if we're going to build a genuine socialist party, I mean we the the the, the, the what it's called is perhaps secondary, but when I when I use the word socialist, I mean communist. For me, Marx and Engels use the terms interchangeably, and, and, and that's how I use them. Genuine communism, genuine socialism, a society in which capitalism has been abolished, classes have disappeared, and the state has withered away. And it's a state, it's it's a society of abundance in which conflict, exploitation, and uh, warfare nations have all have all disappeared and i think that that is entirely possible and feasible and it's an extremely inspirational to me at least it is it's an inspiration and it's an inspirational idea i believe that young people growing up in this world when they watch the tv 
when they look at the poverty, they look at the war, they look at the coastlines being eroded, they look at the destruction of the atmosphere and so on. There is no solution under this system. And that's easily grasped. I actually um, believe that it would be very, very easy to persuade the young generation that communism is the answer. We obviously need to find a way of doing that. There are other groups that try it. Perhaps one of the reasons that we're in this meeting rather than going to branches of those other organizations is that um, we've had difficulties with some of the democracy or the way that things are organized in those organizations. I, I, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. But debate and discussion and disagreement is an essential part of political life. So long as we all share the same aim, the same goal, that ultimate goal of socialism, discussing issues um, and having differences and disagreements shouldn't be a, a, a difficulty. On the question of tactics, then for me at the moment, the immediate issues of standing in elections and what to do in Islington and what to do with Starmer are not that important. I, I don't think that that's the main concern for us. We should intervene in these um, initiatives over which we've no control. It wouldn't be my choice to stand against Starmer. Um, I actually do worry that, in fact, um, I just say this to Jerry, uh, you know, comradely, I am actually worried that because there will be a desire to get Labour elected and Starmer being the leader, that in fact a candidate against Starmer will do particularly badly. Uh, I speak from experience. I stood as a socialist candidate for Tusk and left Unity as a joint candidate in Camberwell and Peckham. I had a great campaign and I think I got 320 something votes. So um, we, we mustn't get carried away with the idea that an electoral alternative is going to immediately pay results. So we have to think carefully about what tactics we would propose, how we would do. I like some of the ideas that have been put across. I like what Neil said. Um, you know, if you've got a basis somewhere, then you stand. The purpose of standing in, in the first per um, period for me is to actually plant your banner and try to try to influence people and persuade people. I also think, however, that any serious socialist party would ultimately have to stand candidates and be winning significant seats in parliament. Because if, if, a, if a socialist movement is going to change the world, is going to change society, it has to have the majority of people behind him. It has to have that force. And that's got to be reflected in parliament. I think we're a long, long way from doing that. But things can change quickly. Things can change overnight. And what we've seen on the picket lines is just the beginning, if, if you like, of, of a new generation learning class struggle that we haven't seen since the 1980s. And I don't think that this is the end of it. it, it it's going to continue and it's going to um, accelerate under Labour. And there are going to be clashes and there are going to be battles and there are going to be fissures and breaks into which Marxist ideas have to be introduced and to try to utilize the experiences of people to draw them towards the ideas of a fundamental change in society. Most people draw socialist conclusions from their own experiences, not necessarily from what they've read, but the two, the two combined, their experience and our assistance, along with others who are Marxists who are doing the same, I don't want to um, disregard those other organizations. Uh, together, we can make big changes. Ian said, who's going to call this Marxist unity um, conference or talk or whatever? Well, I put it out in the article on the on the website, and we, we should discuss what we do with that um, idea, what we do with that call, see whether anybody else is interested and, and anybody else is serious. My own belief is that any serious communist would want to discuss the idea of um, discussing with other communists to see what could be done together. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Nick. That's great. And um, 
just in time for us to finish because we need to finish at nine o'clock. Um, so thank you everybody who, who attended. Thank you everybody for your contributions. Um, and uh, our next meeting is on May Day. Uh, it's uh, what do we mean by socialism? I hope that you will all join and that you'll invite some more people that you speak to um, and that you know, friends, comrades, um, whoever, uh, to get them involved so that we, we uh, have more contributions and more. Uh, I, I always enjoy these meetings because I always learn so much. And it's, uh, as others have said, we are um, discussing ideas because we, we may have differences here and there, but we, we all really, I think, want the end, the end result of um, changing society and um, socialist, communist uh, world. So thank you very much indeed, and um, look forward to seeing you next time in two weeks. Bye, everybody.